Twitter auf. Okay. The Pathways Learning Experience. You had to choose a path, navigate Basecamp. You, have, you had to choose a next path if you finished the first one and you had to deal with re the repeated content. Then came the aha moment. Aha, so I need to think bigger. Yeah, so I need to think about what is my goal. Um, I have to think about why did I join Toastmasters for? What skills did I want to develop? So I met a guy who um, was um, a first responder. So he worked as an ambulance driver and he was in the first responder industry. So it was um, very interesting to hear his story. He joined Toastmasters for exploration. So he did a lot of things. He was karate teacher um, and a writer. So he did join Toastmasters to, ex to explore his own personality, which of the multiple path, um, yeah, self-development stages he wanted to, to, to go. So is anyone among us who prepares for a marathon, a marathon runner? Okay, I see no one, okay. But uh, what I want to say is, you can include it all in, in the Brassways program. Yeah? If you, for example, need to raise some money for an event, yeah? if you need to raise some money for a charity event, um, for example, here in Germany, we had a big flooding event, um, high water, uh, definitely, and we need to yeah, get some yeah, uh, money gathering. Or maybe you have a kid in school Maybe you have to organize a science fair or participate in the science fair. And these are the multiple options um, of what Pathways can do for you. And I, for one, find that amazing. Just think about the, the big uh, choice of um, uh, op op occupations we have. Yeah? Uh, Pathways wants to offer something for everyone. This is a big job. So uh, what I want to say with this slide, uh, try to find an overarching theme to your learning path. Think of, it, think of it as a big vision for your self-development, maybe even your career development, your business development. Some members yeah, um, I, I talked to want to build a brand, yeah, build a business. Very, I find it amazing as well. There's uh, much to learn in Pathways. And um, yeah, the attitude I want to convey is the world is not enough. Yeah, think big. Think on it for it in a, in a world scale. Okay. And um, when members first join, so um, if you are an individual, and um, I need to find a path to get my personal development. I want to present you with the, these three paths. And so, so the presentation mastery is the standard path for uh, new members, I recommend. We also have engaging humor and visionary communication. So these are great foundation for your personal development. And new members, I think new members will get the most out of these three paths. So um, I quickly want to go back to the slide of this. Um, can you maybe post in the chat room uh, ideas you might have for your personal development? What what currently do you have for an event to plan? Or do we have an idea? Um, ah, yes, interesting question. Um, does 
running a marathon or raising money count as project and pathways? Yes, you can make it count by doing a speech. Yeah, if you're giving a speech, a public speech at, uh, for example, um, a social event, you can convert that to the pathways and to your learning experience and uh, get it um, checked by the VP education of your home club. The only thing you have to do is uh, having another Toastmaster present and giving you an evalu evaluation, a written evaluation, and later on a club meeting, a verbal uh, evaluation. Yeah, membership building events, get more members, very important, very important for clubs to have a, um, a healthy membership base. Yeah, and um, yeah, okay, build more clubs, of course, everything um, very important, of course, and um, getting impactful when you explain something to some group or a group of people. Yeah. Wow, expanding my business internationally, doing youth leadership programs. Yeah, very fine, very good. I love these ideas. I love these ideas. So I picked up networking. It is really challenging to match life out of the club atmosphere. Yeah. Cool. So we have the individual growth where you build your primary personality. And we also have um, more like a big picture uh, learning path. So you are more of a leader you step into more of a leader role, so you lead to a greater good. So we have the learning path of dynamic leadership for that, strategic relationships and team collaboration. And yeah, okay. And next up is a quick overview of the uh, learning path um, divided in groups. So you can think of the 11 learning paths in, in as, have, as having uh, focus points. Yeah, We have a public speaking focus or you have a leadership focus. When I started Toastmasters, I was not aware of the leadership potential. So I later I recognized these leadership um, projects. I came, of course, for the public speaking and the self-confidence building. And um, we have four groups. We have public speaking, classing with presentation mastery as the yeah, as a very uh, famous path. And we have um, light leadership, um, basically a learning path with some leadership content, famous path there is leadership development and motivational strategies. Uh, on third, we have moderate leadership area. Um, this is uh, actually my path where I am currently on, dynamic leadership. And we have area number four, where it is a strong leadership focus effective coaching, innovative planning, and persuasive influence. So, um, yeah. And the basic structure of the path in Pathways Learning System, you see it here. Yeah, uh, It's built up in levels. You start with level one, then level two, three, four, five. And um, yeah, each time it gets a little bit more challenging. Yeah. So uh, icebreaker, spe icebreaker speech is classically, yeah, the first speech, speech you give at your club. 
and it's, it's a good entry project. And then, for example, it goes later to level two. You have active listening. A very good role for that is table topics master. Yeah, we have to practice your active listening skills. And then comes a little bit of a switch with level three. There you meet with required projects and elective projects. So you have a little bit more variety. So you choose a learning path and then there are offered to you multiple projects, projects which you can do. And you have to select two of them and you have to do uh, one of them um, verpflichtend. Ah, damn it. <laughs> uh, compulsory, Chloe. Uh, compulsory. So, and a very similar uh, pattern is in level four. You have to have one required project and one elective project. With level five, it is two required and one elective. And this is very good explained in this uh, pathways catalog. And I will post that URL in the chat room so you can read up on it later on. There, uh, very, um, very famous Toastmasters of District 57 yeah, came together and put together this content so you have a good overview. Of the, of the basic learning path. Now, of course, you have to do some homework first. So maybe you think and think about who is your target audience. And there I meant to, of course, propose, get to know your fellow club members so you can craft your speech yeah, towards better understanding and actually delivering on point for your fellow club members. And identify them and identify the focus points of the projects. Create some to-do lists, a list of materials. This is right in the project descriptions. Yeah? If you go to the base camp, um, you will find a project description, but you will find much more detailed material you can read up on and use that for, for creating your speech content. And sometimes these are forms, sometimes this is a short questionnaire, and, yeah, and the evaluations forms for your evaluation speaker. So you simply practice, polish, and deliver. And then when you are finished, it's, it's important to measure your success. You will do that within the Pathways uh, Basecamp software. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, next up, I want to cover some vis visualization Oh, <laughs> visualization methods. So maybe you have created an arc for your self-development, why you are a Toastmaster, why you are doing it all, and want to think about it more visually. So a very good method I found is creating a vision board, or it, sometimes it's called action board. Yeah, You collect some images, from paper magazines or digital, even digital um, archives. Then you use some colored yarn to string it all together. Use some decorative measures, uh, putting gold stars. But of course, um, this um, yeah, this is, should, be, should be helping you in creating your learning experience. And do you know of any other visualization methods? Maybe write in the chat some other visualization methods you have used yourself. Yeah, mind maps. Yeah, I like them very much. I, that's actually the way I created the, yeah, the ideas and the, the gathering for this 
workshop content. Oh, word clouds, word clouds. Yeah, nice. I know that one. Mm -hmm. Meditations. Oh, interesting. Ah, Zaskia, I would certainly like to know more about that. Uh, maybe we have uh, afterwards some time to chat. Ah, guided meditation with visualization in it. Visualize your goals and your food yourself. Very good. Mm -hmm. So it can be, um, for example, uh, one project in level four is uh, produce your podcast. Yeah, you, um, this allows you to do a podcast episode. Uh, I think it is three. Yeah, affirmations. Yeah. So with this, I want to say, use your path, which uh, is offered to you to the maximum of your possibility. And then it should be much more meaningful to you. Yeah. Yeah. And then you put it together, use the pathways catalog and do some strategic planning. Ah. Pinterest, yes, very good idea. Pinterest, I use that myself. This you will find a super big amount of images there. Yeah. So please pay attention with this slide. I put much work in this slide. <laughs> so I want you to think upside down. What do I mean by that? I mean by that starting with level five, four, three, two, one in that in that order, because we have to think a little bit ahead. Um, if you look at um, level five, you will have a big project at the end, for example, creating a division conference or um, doing professional speaking, a keynote speech. This is very important because it gives you motivation to work on it or the other way around. Um, if you think about it, oh, I'm doing a keynote speech. Oh, I will. This is quite big for me. I, this, this really doesn't resonate with me. I let's let us um, select another path, maybe. Yeah. So is this path covering the most points so that it helps me develop in my endeavor? Yeah. This is also important because you definitely need a longer commitment towards that project. Choose your path and achieve your goal. You will be working with teams. So let's have a look. These are five paths who promote um, yeah, teamwork. Yeah? And within these teams, you, of course, you create events, you create for example, a toast, a whole Toastmaster evening. Maybe you are Toastmaster of the day, so you create to, toast, a classic Toastmaster event with, with classic agenda. And these five paths are very good for that, because I know it uh, from other members. You can expand. Yeah, think of it as a spider web. You can expand out in many areas of expertise, and it should give you um, much motivation. So through networking you will find your resources maybe you have no idea what, what i'm doing with uh, motivational strategies but i can draw on other experts to help me get to my goal and this i found this works yeah 
um, these are five paths for that. And again, you don't have to write them down. You will get the slides afterwards. I uh, collected the email addresses um, from your registration in the Zoom software, and you will get them sent in a follow-up email. So just, yeah. And important point I want to make with this slide is everybody gains from such an event. Everybody grows. I find that wonderful. Another big opportunity is creating so-called club events and participating, uh, most importantly, in club events. So I have an example. Um, So if you click on this URL I just posted in the chat room, you will see a live example of such a club event. Um, it's in German, but um, uh, just look at the pictures. It's a story about a, a tour bus, a virtual tour bus. Of course, we had to um, basically uh, throughout the whole Corona time, we had to get creative what you can do. And uh, this, uh, Advanced Toastmaster Club um, decided to do a virtual tour with a virtual tour bus. And I remember this worked really well. So instead of a tr traditional open house event, which it, the Toastmasters often do, it, um, it was more, more easy to digest for the participants. And I can only recommend to participate in such an event. So. Um, Another good example for this one is this um, creating unofficial speech contests. Toastmasters, of course, has official contests, but you can also create unofficial speech contests. And um, there we have an example from last week. We, we did uh, Tall Tales, Tall Tales speech contest. It offers a multitude of projects. So it really um, is very diverse. Um, you have to think about your target audience yeah, in doing a, a speech contest and which objective fund I, uh, do I want to uh, meet. For example, we had four speech categories, table topics, German, English, and tall tales, tall tales German, English. You have to create schedule, you have to make a budget. For example, we had um, food and drink there. We have to bring audio and video equipment. We have to think about marketing, registration, the event itself, the speakers and the appreciation on stage and afterwards. You have to invite external guests, invite the media, newspaper, radio people and yeah create follow-up meetings and again use these opportunities to create pathways projects for yourself or if you have a division director like piali with me she will come to you and ask you what do you want to do use these opportunities So get a little bit choosy, I, I mentioned. Um, in level five, you, for example, you have to deliver a keynote speech of 18 to 22 minutes before a maybe big audience. And maybe you say, oh, that really doesn't resonate with me. Oh, the standard Toastmaster speeches are only five to seven minutes. Oh, now I need to give 18 minutes of speech. Oh, this really doesn't resonate me and I'm not up to that level yet. Yeah. So now let me tell you a little tip with that. Um, you can do it um, anyway um, because extra is free. Yeah. Uh, for example, in the level three, we have a lot of elective projects and you paid for it. Yeah. Um, 
and always refine and uh, craft your speech. So maybe you say to yourself, I did a terrible job with that speech. I, I simply do that again and select the project. And yeah, use your club members to your advantage. Yeah? They are your guinea pigs. Yeah? They give you constructive feedback and open feedback. Um, yeah. Oh, if you say, um, I remember I did a speech about finance and uh, later on I recognized being a finance guy really doesn't resonate with me. I repeat that project and do it with another uh, theme, another topic. So it was a funny experience. Yeah. So next I want to tell you some other secrets. Pathways allows for incremental learning, safe and honest feedback, and in your order, this point is really important, do it in your order, you find fit. I remember in the first Pathways years, uh, yeah, or years, or years or months, it was uh, a fixed order. Yeah, You had to do the Pathways in the fixed order, level one, two, three, four, five. And nowadays you can do them in any order you like. Of course, yeah, that's not always um, sensible. What I mean by that is, do the, do it use pathways to your advantage and use in order uh, you choose and um important to know about pathways it's not like learning in schools yeah you do not get a fixed curriculum yeah S um, do it to suit your needs this is not a college course and you are not getting any grades yeah you are not getting an A, you are not getting an F. This is your tool and use it the way you want to use it. And most importantly, don't feel locked in by the projects. Most projects or yeah, many projects, I should say, should say um, they begin with the words, yeah, um, deliver a speech on any topic. Yeah? And they go to detailed descriptions of how they would like to see uh, the project. And um, it's important yeah, to not feel locked in and don't get stuck. Don't get stuck. Always ask a more experienced member or your mentor, of course, if you are feeling stuck and need to get unstuck. Another good tip is um the pdf version yeah it is um yeah this slide yeah okay um within the pathways base camp software you find this um yeah the slide or this area where it says print my project you it's um, yeah you and can navigate to that by using the bottom um what you see here in the bottom oval in the combo box. And then you can uh, select print my project. And there you get a PDF file where you can see all the content which is Toastmasters expecting you to deliver in this project. This is very helpful, um, I found, uh, because this is, um, yeah, you navigate with these slides yeah, from the left to the right and you only have this single screen but uh, and on this screen it's sometimes distorted or you are dealing with power blockers with this pdf you can print it out if you like print it out and read it in a relaxed atmosphere yeah Yeah, uh, Ronnie, I can um, can say you. I can say to you, you do not do need to do the projects in order. Of course, it's not always sensible to begin with a level four project if you are not there. Yeah, uh, if you are a new member, you can, you should maybe begin with a level one projects. Yeah, all levels are open.
So pathways also shows us some feedback forms. Yeah? At the end of the project, you find feedback forms, which Toastmasters prepared for you. And um, you can make a decision. Uh, do I want to use the feedback forms or not? Maybe your local Toastmaster clubs does have a tradition of doing evaluations um, yeah, kind of traditionally, and they, do, they have never used these feedback forms. So it is okay. Um, use them or do not use them. Uh, either way, you will receive safe and honest feedback. And you can always ask your VP education if it is okay. You can mix and match projects and still make good progress. Every single speech you give, ask for feedback and ask for help. And maybe you are more of a classic, you're, you like more the classic path, yeah? Doing the icebreaker speech, speech where you introduce yourself or maybe your project in case you're building a business. And I want to hear from you, um, what is your project? And which topics did you speak about in your icebreaker speech or in your first level? So maybe you can post in the chat, what are good topics you used yourself in icebreaker speeches? Mm -hmm. Lessons learned, yeah. Personal values, oh, very important topic. I also I find that a very important topic because values inform our decisions, yeah. Presenting myself, yeah, building self confidence on stage, talking about different stages in your life, yeah. At a certain stage in your life, you are more geared towards certain topics. Yeah. Yeah. Toastmasters gives so much opportunities for learning. Um, yeah. I, I like the multi layered learning in Toastmasters very much. Yeah. Uh, projects and participations are offered to you, and you can take them, and you should take them. Ah, classic topic. Yeah why I'm still at Toastmasters after seven years. Yeah, always very super interesting to hear that. Yeah. How to thrive in the fourth industry revolution. Yeah. Me, myself, I'm also a technical guy. So this is a topic which would certainly interest me. Yeah. important to um, recognize is doing baby steps yeah do it in bite-sized pieces find a way to reward yourself <laughs> and uh, for some people it's a bit like a, a chocolate snack bar or some peanuts yeah find a way to reward yourself do it in small steps and introduce rewards for yourself Adjust your pace, adjust your time frame. You can do it in three weeks. Okay, <laughs> this is rather challenging to do a whole pathway in three weeks. But yeah, I don't know where the record is. But what I want to say is, you can do it in three weeks, three months, or three years. Yeah, it's up to you. And when you're done, start over. Start a second pass. It's still twenty dollars. Yeah. $20 for a whole lot of learning and use it, use it to the maximum of your of the ability and ability of the system. Every speech you give, yeah, refine it to shine, to shine on stage. Schedule the speech with the VP education at your club, present the speech 
and experience exponential growth, incorporate the feedback, tidy up your feedback, and reflect on your path and your lessons learned. Use your club as a support group. They, as, as I said, they are your guinea pigs. Yeah, you are in a trusted learning atmosphere, and I find I myself find it super relaxing. And let's hope you ha never have to deal with a hostile audience. But Halsways even has a learning project uh, where you need to deal. Yeah, you learn some methods, some strategies of how to deal with a hostile audience, yeah, doing distractions and doing shouts and, uh, yeah. So I want to give a summary. Summary is put together a plan, do the preparations, execute your speaking project, yeah, on stage or behind the stage, get creative and participate in club events, do the baby steps, refine your speeches, and use pathways the way you want. Extract maximum benefit for you. Okay, this is my side project. Uh, I wanted to quickly show it, but I skipped this part. Uh, I created a web page where I explain the pathways in German, but of course we are an English audience. So for that, I have another recommendation for you. Um, the Toastmaster Germany Council. It's um, a so-called Discord server. Uh, you can, this is kind of a web-based software. You can join this software and create an account. And you can meet like-minded Toastmasters to discuss a very wide range of topics. Um, we are at the moment, uh, we are building the English community. Uh, for, the, uh, for the time being, it's um, primarily German. But as I said, we are building the English community. And this is basically a chat room we can meet very high quality Toastmasters and ask your questions. So what is at the end of your journey? I hope I showed you some inspiration and you got a lot of ideas. And with this, I want to start the open question and answer round. Thank you very much for listening. So let's enjoy the remaining time. So I think we can do um, this 7.30 PM. And now let me stop screen sharing and let us open it up. Open it up. So I hope you can you could read my slides. Yeah, the text was not too small. Or hi, Martin. I I found um, I found it very inspiring, actually. Um, what you were saying, I, and I probably in my mind I had to sort of restructure it. I it was quite revealing to me because I think you you um, conceive of things in a different way to me and I had I, I took a while to catch up with you and I think one of the ways um, that I had to put it back into my head was to think of all the rules that I thought were true about pathways and think Manuel is saying turn it upside down you know so you say um, I have to start at the beginning and you're saying maybe not and then you say, I have, to, I, I work on one path at a time. And you would say, maybe not. And you, you know, I, I might say, I have to think of something. I have to invent something, especially for Toastmasters. And you're saying, maybe not. So absolutely everything. So my head is buzzing quite a lot at the moment because everything that is an easy way to explain pathways doesn't cover the rule breaking 
that you are saying is actually the advantage of pathways. So um, it's it's quite a big deal. Also, I'm in, um, I mean, just cut me off. Uh, the other people are saying they want to speak, but um, I'm in a, a, a jurisdiction which is in front very prescriptive. You know, I don't know if you've heard of the Anglo-Saxon, I think the Saxon part of that means it's like Germany. Um, you, you think it's kind of suck it and see, uh, it's all emergent and everything will be fine. And what's the worst that can happen and stuff like this. Whereas in France, you need it to be, uh, you know, I, I'm not going to start step one until you've told me step five, six, seven, I mean, not levels, but um, so I have to digest what you said and think how that would be for a culture which is very prescriptive. And uh, yeah, I, I don't like to encourage handholding, but I think there might have to be a middle way. We'll have to see. Sorry, people have put their hands up. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Wendy, for your contribution. Yeah. Um, so uh, only thing I can say to that, yeah, talk to your fellow members, talk to your mentors, and they will guide you. They will give you tips. And uh, most of important, I did that mistake myself. I got stuck. And for this kind of pathway, you need long-term motivation. Yeah, you need to think a little bit reversed. Yeah, uh, what is in level five? Let me, let me have a look at level five and what is required of me. And if I cannot think I will ever do that, you should not choose this path. Yeah. Uh, let's hear from Elizabeth. Elizabeth, yes. Thank you. And just a comment to the lady who is just speaking to say, start as many paths as you want. Uh, I know I belong to more than one club. And so what I'm trying to do is do one path per, per club. But I mix them up sometimes because I have a topic I want to do. But actually, my other point that I want to make is we, we have members in my club where I'm a VPE where they belong to more than one club. And if you belong to more than one club, then the VPE in all the clubs you belong to gets the notification that you're done your level. And this causes complications because maybe you went, maybe you planned that that level should go to club one, but the, the VPE in club two sees it first. So we have to be really, really careful about this. So what we've done over time is that when the person finishes the level, they inform the two VPEs, if they belong to two clubs, to say, oh, well, I wanted to go to, you know, club two. That was more a tip. Oh, thank you. Very valuable tip, yeah. Of course, it's important to measure our progress and informing the VTU education of our progress definitely helps with that. Yeah. So next, I want to hear from Laura. Yes, um, I have a question because we have a few new members and I just want to organize an evening to introduce pathways. But I can remember when I start with pathways, it felt like quite overwhelming and there's so much to say about. So do you have any tips or guides um, how to start it or what are the kind of things you should share on this kind of evening? Do you have any tips? Yeah, let's uh, use crowd intelligence. So for my, so, um, I can just speak from experience. Yeah, uh, at this time we have a really good experience with this pathway system. And what I like to do is simply look around YouTube. You find everything on YouTube, really everything. Um, you can find whole Toastmaster evenings being recorded, whole speeches, and just look how other, how other people have done it. And there you can extract your own way. This is, this is only my... Um, so maybe you can speak up, or maybe, maybe others can speak up, speak to this question, yeah? Um, a suggestion from me, uh, speaking up again, is we do a new member orientation where if we, if we have a couple of people coming in at the same time, then we do walk through with them, uh, both about the pathway system and about EasySpeak. 
So they needed to know how to use both. So we um, let them know how to do it and get them to do it as we're guiding along. Yeah, thank you, Elizabeth. And this reminds me, you can do, for example, icebreaker marathons. Yeah, you can do, um, for example, five people at, this, at one, one evening, five people can give their icebreaker speech and doing on um, live, they go to, they have a screen in their meeting room where they access the Pathways Basecamp software and they do the check marks. Yeah? And this way, all members see it and I found it very uh, motivating. And um, doing it all live and doing icebreakers. Yeah. Or other thing you can do, um, doing a whole level. Yeah. Um, Pathways is organized in levels and you can focus on level two deliver all the projects in level two on one evening. Yeah, you have different members giving different speeches and all these speeches belong to level two. So, of course, this is a good learning example. So, uh, you can hear from y Yolanda. Thanks, Manuel. Um, I have a question about club meeting roles because some club meeting roles are also a pathways project. For example, if you are an evaluator, then it's level one. Um, for example, if you do improvisation table topics, then it's uh, level three, active listening. If you do a social speech, for example, at uh, a party from, from Toastmasters, uh, it's also um, level three. Zoom producer level four and the last that I found is if you have a club officer's role, you can use it for level five, leading in a volunteer organization. My question is because you know the project so well, are there more? Are there more club meeting roles that are also a project in pathways? Um, so we have to distinguish. Um, um, there's actually required roles who have to uh, finish before entering level four. Yeah, these, these ones I want to um, yeah, separate out. So these are kind of required. Yeah, we have to be a table topics master. You have to, toast, have to be Toastmaster of the day. And the other area is yeah, um, doing roles to fulfill your projects. Yeah, um, at the moment, I don't know of special roles. Um, of course, it can be a challenging role or a, a role to organize an area conference, for example. Mm -hmm. You can extract many pathways projects from that. Uh, for example, one project is um, um, creating online trainings or what it's called um, creating online um, meetings. So this one will be yeah, the basis for a pathways project. And then the participant only has to give a speech afterwards of his lessons learned or of some other experience he had or yeah. and this way the project is fulfilled. Yeah, but if, if I may add a question, for example, if you are the Toastmaster, is that also uh, the, the, the club meeting role, but is that also a project in, in pathways? I think it's not a classic project in Pathways. No. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So we have a question from, from Milena, Milena Loga. Uh, hi. Uh, just uh, um, not necessary a question, but a clarification. Keep in mind that if you can make a role in whatever order you want. The only thing that um, you need to know that the VPE needs to uh, report it to Toastmaster International level by level. So it means that if you finish level five before level four, he cannot report it or she. Uh, so in Basecamp, you can do it in each order that you want, but the levels needs to be reported to Toastmaster International all at once. So not uh, or necessary, not necessary all at once, but one after two after three or in the same time. 
yeah yeah thank you for this clarification so i can say um for example if you are in level four and you actually finish all projects of level four but you have not finished level two then of course this level four cannot be completed at this time you first have to um, finish level two it can be completed in base camp but it cannot be reported to toastmaster international before oh. level two okay thank you yeah um i have a request manuel mm -hmm. when you send us the presentation can you also send the chat because um one of us are there on mobile and the, the chat yeah. cannot be saved we'll do we'll do i write it down on my to-do list yeah okay thank you so we have giza giza k Giza, do you, ah, yes. Um, I have a question we got, you, you, the first of one is the, is the feedback, but for the feedback, it's when you uh, ask people for feedback, they have to uh, connect to pathway to fill it in. That, that's what you mean with feedback. Um, so it's kind of optional to do that. So Toastmasters offers you this prepared feedback form, yeah? And you usually, so how they think of it is that the speaker gives it to his evaluator to fill it out. Yeah. On a paper format. Yeah, on paper, or you can even do it uh, by PDF form. Yeah, you can fill it out on screen. Um, these PDFs allow for text entry. Okay. And it's possible to do that in a fully digital way without paper, yeah, without printing. Um, yeah. But this is not required at all. So uh, these forms, are, I see it as a recommendation. But um, of course, each club has his tradition. Yeah, maybe your club does have um, a way of delivering evaluation speeches and doing written evaluations. Um, then use that. Yeah, don't be get get hung up, hung up on it. Yeah, don't let yourself stop by it. And this is my experience. The other point was the reporting. You said there's a, you can print a report. Is that for each level or in each level there are different options or is it for each option there is a report that you can print in? I'm not really sure what you mean by a report. Um, I think you, uh, I think in one of the slides you said when you do like a level, you can print the whole project. Oh yeah, uh, okay, this one. Okay. Called reporting but project. Now uh, it's really a speech project content. Yeah, it's uh, more like a description of the speech project. It's not a report card or anything. It's not official. It will be not be used. It's only for personal use. Yeah, and that's the reason um, you don't see this published. Yeah, you see this project descriptions, but the um, but <laughs> these are rather short. It's only um, one paragraph or maybe three paragraphs of text in the public visible project description, but pathways projects are actually really long. Yeah, you have maybe 10 pages to read. Yeah. But again, this is not um, required or this is not, it's not reported in any way. It's for your benefit. Okay. Thanks, Manuel. Uh, so we have Barbara. Yeah, Barbara, you are still muted. Thank you. Barbara <laughs> Herger, Norris Toastmasters Nuremberg. Uh -huh. um, I have a few points. Evaluations. Yes, you can record them and, and put a file into your pathways folder. It's to be remembered, these folders are in a cloud and something could happen. So I save all of my evaluations personally and put them into my Toastmasters file on my computer so that they won't, if something happens to the cloud, they won't get lost. Secondly, orientation, doing different levels I find that a very good idea, but maybe irritating for new 
members. Yeah. So I find Elizabeth's suggestion of doing an orientation is just a wonderful idea so that the people know what we're even talking about. If we guys, well, go ahead and do number five. <laughs> and they're going, I'm scared of number one, that they really do need a good orientation or just to give the insurance. Assurance, yes, you're new, start with the first path to, to give them this security. And the other point I wanted to make was, um, yeah, it's, I, I feel it's really important to do the, be aware of the different levels. For example, I have a fellow Toastmasters, she wants to redo the website. That could be a great HPL project, number five, in level five. But if she has never, ever looked ahead, she can't know that. So experienced Toastmasters are really called upon to assist and mentor members who are really energetic and active to be sure that they realize lots of the things that they are doing, they can get credit for. So. Yes. I really like the idea of doing the different levels, different times, exactly what you need to do to be done. And great idea. I'm taking that with me today. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you. So I, I, I simply um, speak on. Um, I talked to a member once and he said he feels pressured by pathways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he feels pressures. He feels locked down. He feels like a prisoner. Um, but it's, I, I find that that is not true. Yeah. Again, many speech projects start with a, a phrase, deliver a speech on any topic. So just um, be patient. Yeah patient and actually read the project yeah <laughs> i sometimes meet members who only read the first line or the first mm -hmm. sentence or the first paragraph <laughs> but pathways <laughs> has much more to offer yeah. and if you actually go into bicecam software you see many of the projects have three pages four five six pages yeah and yeah Um, I would like to ask, how do you manage the, the, the difficulty with uh, uh, long time members? Because they really like, they really enjoy to use the, uh, the manual with the five different speeches, uh, usually thematic one, like um, tell a story, um, enjoy some um, theater uh, extract things like this, and all of this kind of exercise that disappeared through pathways. And some of them uh, were a little bit sad about that because they like to use all these very diverse manuals. So how do you manage that? Yeah, let me quickly check if I understand correctly. You talked about the old speech manuals. Yeah, you talked about the yes. old advanced communicator manuals. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is wonderful because you can use them in that way because yeah a lot of speech projects begin begin with a phrase deliver a speech on any project so your choice of this speech content is the first project of that adv advanced manual you liked so very much from the yeah, old program and you simply take it yeah okay so one idea would be uh for any kind of fun, you can pick exercise from on manual and uh, what's it? link them to the pathway uh, exercise you want to. And it will, if it fits, then it will be approved. Yes. Um, okay. Of course, talk to your VP education if it's really fitting or yeah, if you get a sense, mm -hmm. yeah, it will be fitting, then it will be. 99% um, 
um, yeah, fitting and, and available. Uh, but you, of course, always check with your VP of education if you are in doubt. Yeah. Okay, sure. So I think this is kind of thing that I can promote because we have a club with very uh, different level in this matter. And some of them have been in a club since more than 15 years. Yeah. <laughs> so it can be a, a trick. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So I see Barbara has a question again. Yeah. I just wanted to make a comment on that. I'm one of these long time Toastmasters who really rebelled against the pathways. And then one thing you might give them, I, it just dawned on me, I am a Toastmaster and I am here to learn, to grow, and pathways is a challenge. And this mindset really helped me to say, okay, to be a good example for my club members, I've got to be the first one to jump in and do it. And that this mindset of it's a challenge and that's what I'm here at Toastmasters for really helped me. So maybe you could give that to your people, Anna. And I like it now. <laughs> I still miss the books, but I like the pathways. So these old printed books have some value maybe on the black market. <laughs> <laughs> so you, what would you pay for such an old uh, printed book? Really good value and we scan them. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> if you look good on the internet, you can download all the old books. If you look for the title, then you find them somewhere. Yeah. 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 I, uh, I can. Uh, I've seen that. Yeah. <laughs> you can definitely. And of course, you can, uh, for example, look at these. Um, yeah, this is, this is on web pages, and again, you will also find it on you on the YouTube's. Yeah, yeah. I, if I buy, I think uh, the start in uh, pathways is uh, done nicely because you start with. Uh, the same icebreaker and then the uh, evaluate and feedback uh, in one and two steps i think it's very useful because uh, you uh, get used to learn from what your club members say and you have to listen carefully and uh, if you listen what they say you think ah yeah how could i miss this and that and for example you uh, make your speech too much to with too much topics and you talk too much and then uh, they say yeah well uh, restrict it and then you hold your second speech and uh, it's then much better so it's very useful that when you start uh, you learn that right away so i think that's a, a good thing from pathways yeah yeah um i'm also uh Again, I, I love the atmosphere at the Toastmaster clubs and this receiving feedback. Yeah, receiving feedback maybe for the first time it stings a little bit. It's it's um, it's a stings. Um, it's not very comfortable, but you get used to it. And if you, yeah, if you in in hindsight you you think about it, it's it's super helpful. What I like uh, also is as a principle which I thought uh, everybody gains. Yeah, everybody gains by doing the projects or doing, for example, particip simply participating in a Toastmaster evening, uh, doing the role of timekeeper. Yeah, it, it shows you. Yeah, uh, really, I, I, I uh, stand by it. Time management is a leadership skill. Yeah, time management is a leadership skill. Um, but this realization, you come to it by being the timekeeper of the evening. Yeah. Or being a toastmaster of the evening, of course.
Uh, Manuel, just to say something to that the feedback that's difficult to get the feedback. Honestly, what I like the Toastmasters is that the feedback is always in a way of benevolence or bienveillance in, in French. So it's like a goodwill. And that's why I eventually stayed at Toastmasters because often at work, at school, you get negative feedback. That's mm -hmm. the classical. Mm -hmm. Toastmasters, I think it was never, I never felt it negative, but just very precise about not using the gestures, but not something that hurts personally. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why I really like Toastmasters, just to encourage people that feel that it's like a negative feedback. I think negative feedback you get somewhere else yeah. at work or wherever, but less at Toastmasters. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Ronnie, Ronnie, please. Yes, um, uh, I want to be a little bit uh, provocative here um, in a sense that uh, I am pretty new to Toastmasters. And I have to say in the beginning and still now, and this is also the reason of me of joining this uh, workshop or this uh, training, I don't, didn't find my way in the bad ways. So uh, I'm very honest on that level. And um, I, I wonder uh, if we have new members or new people joining. Um, and uh, I, I really welcome, uh, I don't know who said it uh, because I don't remember, uh, but uh, where they give that new membership orientation, I think that's a, it's an excellent uh, thing to do. It's, it's something I missed in, in the club, but uh, I mean, the reasons for that are pretty clear because all members in the Maastricht club are pretty young members, so we don't have a long term members in our club. But I was wondering, how do you motivate, uh, explain, uh, explain the why, the what's in it for me, for new members to take up a certain pathway? and to endorse in, in that pathway to pull, uh, follow that uh, till the end. Because I also believe that if you want to complete the pathway, I mean, you won't complete it in, let's say, uh, three months. I think uh, doing a full pathway will take you at least uh, one to two years. So I'm, I'm eager to, uh, hear, to hear some feedback on, on, on the questions. I mean, the what's in it for me, for the members, uh, the time you take to complete a pathway, why you should complete a pathway. So that's already three questions. I'll stop here. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Ronnie. Thank you, Ronnie. I, I like to uh, answer first, of course, it's open to the group. Um, uh, the way I see it when I speak to uh, beginning Toastmasters is yeah, try to build a rounded personality. Maybe you have you experienced holes in your personality. You have the a Maslow pyramid of needs, yeah, Maslow's, and you experienced maybe a, a hole, yeah, you, you have a, a deficiency, maybe in public speaking, I cannot speak in front of crowds, I freeze, uh, it's like this, I want to say, yeah, explore where your character has some rough spots or some where, spots where your character is not rounded, and this way um, explore yourself, yeah. You explore that by practicing, by giving speeches, and this is the way I like to speak to new members, yeah. Explore your personality, and um, if you are maybe 18 years of age or a young professional, maybe 22 years of age, yeah, it's interesting for them to explore themselves and maybe put it in a way of developing a rounded personality if i know i'm not good with financials if i know i'm not good with time management yeah i will have the opportunity to train these skills yeah how do others see it yeah which tips gives the new members to build the long-term motivation they need Hedwig. Hello, uh, Manuel. 
Uh, I have a totally different question. Uh, I just finished my first icebreaker speech and I got very uh, yeah, positive uh, reactions. So uh, I'm eager to learn uh, more. And I planned my second uh, speech also, but uh, I'm just struggling with uh, the kind of topic I choose. This is something it's, I never heard about uh, this before, how to choose a good topic. So where can I find this information or is this my problem or how, how do you manage yeah. choosing a good one? Oh, I super like to answer this question. So simply take the newspaper and take the first stories that are written on the newspaper. Yeah. Think about it, talk about it. Don't get stuck in your head. You are thinking too much. It's about, also, um, the way I see it, it's all about speaking practice. Yeah. Don't get hung up on the topics. Yeah. It's important as a new member to gain experience in speaking publicly. publicly yeah. And this is my suggestion. Um, of course, uh, others see it different. But for me, the practical, the practical viewpoint stands in front of all. Yeah, get speaking practice. Okay. Thank you. Oh, Barbara. I find in answer to the question about motivating or in getting new members interested, I am a big fan of observing. I feel that you learn so much through observing and listening and taking on the different roles at a meeting. Communication, our counter, grammarian, they're things that make you concentrate on the, the language, the, and this helps you grow and learn about communication. Just listening is, is, is a communication skill. So by observing speakers, how did they do it? Oh, I wish I could do it like him. Well, I can't because I'm me. And so how can, just don't forget the power of observing. And like you said, practice, just try it. What I have observed. See if it works for me. You said it perfectly. Yeah, thank you, Barbara. So here is a tip from Craig. Craig says, remember, you can take pictures on your cell phone. That is a story or, yeah, that is a story or topic for your speech. I learned that from a workshop I attended. Yeah, super valuable tip, yeah. Thank you, Craig. So use the current pictures on your phone, or maybe if you have a good storage, go uh, three months backwards. Yeah, I have a history of photos. Maybe where were you three, three months ago? Where have you been one year ago? Speak about that. Make that a topic of your speech. Don't make it too hard. People like to have fun topics, hobbies, kids, dogs. <laughs> it doesn't always have to be something that's going to make us wiser. And <laughs> that is true, Barbara. Yeah. Yes, yes. Because I was telling some of the people in the room, if you want me to come and motivate the people to do pathways, I will, because it's been something that I've been doing here in District 95 because I went to club officer training because people have had no participation in pathways. So I've been motivating the people in the clubs to like get motivated to do pathways because it's not that difficult. And as Manuel mentioned earlier, we do have the old manual book because like I tell people, if you have experienced Toastmasters who were in that old program, ask them for those books. And as Manuel, the Martin said earlier, yes, you can find those books out online because actually I did that one night. I was just out searching for something because I was the BCPR of the club and ran across the competent communicator manual, scan, all in PDF, which is awesome. So there's lots of stuff out there on the internet. You just have to know how to search as they say, but yeah. So nice.
Ja. So, I think we covered a lot of ground. So, um, I think... Uh, it just came to mind, things to find topics. They have always this, it's the day of the uh, hippopotamus, or this week is dementia week. What are your feelings, thoughts about these topics of the day? And there's always some topic that moves you that you want to tell people about. Yeah, use the topics and use them in an entertaining way. So I, I think uh, of Toastmasters of speaking, speaking in an entertaining manner. Yeah, try to find sources of interest or yeah, get a feel for the audience. What could be interesting to most of the audience? Yeah. So as a side note, I stop recording now. Thank you for the official part and thank you for being here in the official part. So I stop the recording now and we can now go over to the unofficial part.